Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, and welcome to another edition of Tech Niche Tips. Who thought we would be here this long? I don't know. Maybe you did. I wasn't too sure. But we are here in the building again. And we, I tell you, I have somebody special for you. But before I even get into that, I'm going to talk about this T-shirt. Well, not T-shirt, but this hoodie that I'm rocking right now from a friend of mine, Prophet Josiah. I just want to give him a shout out. He has this whole merch, God Made Me Do It merch that he actually is uh, pretty much has a store and all these different things for. So if you get a chance, I'm going to put the link below. I want you to just check it out. Grab a hoodie, grab a shirt. Whatever else he has in there, just just go ahead and grab it all. It's really good quality stuff. And that's why I'm rocking it today because I was like, when I got it, I'm like, oh, this is dope. And so I was like, let me go ahead and cop something. So, uh, yeah, so that without being said, actually, I want to just take time to just pause for a moment. Because for those that are in course careers, they know this person that's coming to the stage now. This is course careers royalty. Um, <laughs> honestly speaking. So I'm very, very happy to have her and it's none other. And I'm not even going to delay it. I'm not even going to go and give a whole spiel, but say this, Della Pittman. Welcome to the stage, Della. We're so happy to have you here, Della. Hi, thank you so much, Joseph. I appreciate the uh, grand entrance. <laughs> absolutely i mean yes that i can't tell you how many stories of people that said oh yeah i saw della della's story when troy interviewed her and you know it's just kind of one of those things where you you know you just follow and do things that are helping and benefiting you and you're following your purpose and it opens these tremendous huge doors that who would have thought right who would have thought <laughs> so i'm so glad to have you Honestly, and Thanks. look at look, she's killing it with the boon stand and everything, y'all. Uh, just a shameless plug. I know she's gonna probably talk about this later, but she does have a YouTube channel. Uh, I'm gonna point out there right now. As you can see, her name is at Della Pittman. So definitely go and subscribe after this episode. Yeah, <laughs> after this episode. Subscribe. And if you're not already a course career student, subscribe and make sure you sign up using the link under my channel because I'm sponsoring two students to go through. We'll pay you for your full subscription, the 450. You'll get it right back in your pocket. So you'll be able to pivot into IT, tech sales, or digital marketing for free. Oh, man. Did y'all hear that? I don't think they understood what you just said. She said she is sponsoring students. That means you could actually go to Course Careers for free. Come on. The Della Pittman Scholarship is here, y'all. So you definitely want to sign up, use her link, and let and y'all I want y'all to break into tech. I want y'all to be on the other side. So without further ado, I'm going to go through our usual housekeeping things and I'm going to pass it to Della. Okay, so first things first, right? We start with the boots. Boots is symbolic of the journey. That's right. You've been here long enough, so you know that. And the brain, from boots to the brain, so the brain is symbolic of the mindset someone needs to have in order to be where Della is today and scale from there. So Della, Let's start from the very beginning of your story because the beginning is a great place to start. Yeah, um, there's so many the beginning portions, but I will say uh, for me starting to look for a career, honestly, it really started when I was in the Navy. I was having children. I had a family that was growing and I felt like I was being pulled in a lot of different directions. It was not good for my mental health. I didn't have time with my children. It just, it's anyone that's been in the military doing military law enforcement in particular, you know, it's challenging. You got 12 hour shifts, you're, you're, it's grueling on the, um, but the one way that you justify that for yourself is just, you're doing something honorable for your community, for your country, and it's justifiable. Um, but I got to a space where I felt like I was robbing my children, robbing my husband of who I really was. And I had to take a step back. Um, I tr transitioned that. And I stayed at home for a while. I had my son. So that was my baby and <laughs> my last child. And um, I was home. I was in school. And then that got to a point where it was like I was spinning my wheels. I was going to school for cybersecurity. I had already gotten my, um, oh, geez. <laughs> so I was going to school for cybersecurity. Yeah, I had already got my associates for business management. And I just wanted something different. Like I wanted some, 
something that was going to pay off quickly. Not that I was too impatient or I wanted to give up on school, but I just felt like I was putting in the hours and I wasn't getting the return on investment that I was looking for. So I did some research and I just scoured and scoured. In the meantime, I was doing Uber Eats. My husband was doing Uber Eats to kind of just make ends meet. And we were just, you know, really just grinding and just hustling and doing whatever we could. Not only hustling as in doing anything illegal. I just mean <laughs> staying up at night and doing the schoolwork, waking up in the morning, sending the kids to school, going, doing the Uber Eats, come back and doing some more study and kind of cook dinner. It was, it was tough, you know, it was very tough. And if anyone is going through it, I hear you. I can relate and I've been there and I promise you take all of that grind and that energy and you put it into something like course careers, you will get your return on investment that for it. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I know when you, when you talked about the grind as a parent, all those things that you listed there, I was like, mm -hmm. yes, I understand. Like even between interviews, sometimes I'm running out here putting out fires, not literal fires, but you know, <laughs> somebody's fighting oh, with somebody, yeah. somebody's easy to eat. And and, 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 and so I'm, I think this is going to be the episode for the parents among other people, because I want you to know that we did it. We did it. You know, Della has children. I have my six. We were able to overcome the odds to not only get into tech through course careers, but to then scale from there. So you're in for a treat today. Well, I want you to talk about a little bit about that decision because some people don't know your story Della about when you decided to to make that pivot and change I know you I know you talked a little bit about it but but what made you say yes to course careers man um so I was taking five classes and I mean I'm not taking like I know I had my bachelor's and not get any degree but I was taking like data management and I'm not a huge numbers person um but see, learning SQL, learning Python, you know, learning so many like technical things. And it was, it was brutal, um, but I was getting through it. And I just got to a point where I saw the ad and I was like, you know what? I have this personality that I love to talk to people. I love to connect with people. That's always been me and it always will be me. Um, I love cybersecurity and I'm very, passionate, but I don't want to just be stuck behind this desk, not really interacting with customers. Like I want to grow. So I had to figure out if it even existed to combine the two tech and sales. Cause I did some B2C sales way back in the day. I sold suits, tuxedos, wedding dresses, prom dresses, like you name it. When it came to your special day, whether that be prom or your wedding, I was there to get you your whole, every Everybody hooked up. So I enjoyed it. It was, it just felt amazing to help bring that last missing piece to that special day for someone. And I really wanted to do that again, but I wanted it to be something around the tech space. I don't know about other people, but I always felt like I wasn't smart enough or I had a lot of self doubt that I would, you know, have to overcome when it came to pivoting into tech. So even just majoring in cybersecurity was big for me. Like that took years for me to go to decide and say, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try it. Um, so what I did was I searched LinkedIn and I was looking at jobs on Indeed and um, I did see some pop up and they all wanted experience. They all wanted background. They all, all wanted so much that I felt like I didn't have. And lo and behold, I found a posting for course careers. Um, I did some research. I mentioned it to my husband and we talked about it for a little bit and was like, oh, like, it's not so much, like, it's not thousands of dollars where, you know what I'm saying? It's like, Ooh, like it would hurt me if this was a scam. It was, it was 500. And I was like, you know what, maybe we can do it and just see, like, maybe I'll wait. I'm not ready yet. I have all these classes. Um, but it was the one thing that got me was that you're guaranteed to have a job when you leave. And I was like, man, <laughs> I'm looking at like 18 months left of school. What I'm doing, I'd have to continue that for another half but I can do this thing three months later I can come out with a job I don't know this is looking pretty good so I slept on it for like two days and I felt like you know what this is like what am I afraid of what's the worst that can happen it's self-paced if it ends up being too much I can just wait and finish it once this semester is over like really I didn't have anything to lose other than 450 which is really not that much I'm that's like two pair of Jordans you know what I'm saying like it's not really that much so um yeah, I just went ahead and did it. 
No, that's great. A lot of people are saying to themselves, you know what? That's true. It's, it's only two pair of Jordans. <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't even put those two to two together. So that's a great, great comparison because again, people are trying to figure out whether or not they should make this, this leap. Right. And so one thing you said, which actually resonated with me is that you kind of felt a little bit when it comes to the tech space concern about about how you may appear to be or whatever the case may be. And I, I dealt with the same thing in other places where I work. And that's kind of like the imposter syndrome. You know, the funny thing is that your skills, who you are, basically who, who you bring to the table, it's, it really is who you are. But somehow in our minds, we can get lost in that and kind of forget who we are or think we don't, we can't, we're not able to be in this room when obviously we're in the room for a reason. Can you talk a little bit about imposter syndrome and how you're able to overcome that? Yeah. Um, imposter syndrome sucks. <laughs> it's definitely very challenging, especially when you already deal with, you know, depression, anxiety, imposter syndrome is just like another one, another one of those isms in the room that, you know, you just really don't want to deal with, uh, but you have to. And for me, for me, the best deal with it is I just lean into it, right? And I just take that time and love on myself even more and just push through it because in, in some ways you are kind of an imposter because you're transitioning from one one like person into who you want to be and who you're going to be. So you are in like a transition period. It's almost like, you know, when the butter or when the caterpillar is in the chrysalis, I'm sure it feels like an imposter. Like, what, what am I doing like I'm supposed to be crawling on these leaves like why am I in here but then you come out on the other side a butterfly and you need that period of like you know just kind of sorting through who, who am I what am I doing follow me into this next chapter and what's going to stay in the last chapter because I don't really know um, and that's something I dealt with and I still continue to deal with it um, especially being the role that I got was NDR or SDR role and I was like, man, <laughs> I am a fish out of water. Like, you know, I can do this. Wow. Yeah. No, I, I was pointing up because like, man, you shot straight up. Like you ain't like, bye bye SDR. Hello, <laughs> account manager. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that in a few for sure. But I want to, as I say in the show, I like to peel back the onion because you said something okay. that I think resonates with a lot of people in this day, especially in light of what we came through what we're actually still experiencing with the COVID and the pandemic is basically this, this emphasis on mental health. You know, we kind of have, you know, I've dealt with anxiety. I've dealt with stress. I've dealt with depression myself in various portions of my life. Uh, one thing I would say about this test with course careers, don't get afraid of people. Y'all can do it, but I had so much pressure. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit myself and then I'm getting right back to you, Della, but I had so much pressure to make it happen because why my wife was doing our sixth child. And I, you heard this in an interview that I had with Justin Wharton and, and my story. If you haven't, definitely go to his channel, check tech journey and check it out. But I was dealing with a lot of pressure to get this job because I wanted my wife to stay home for an extended time and <laughs> not just the, the little six weeks they give a, a woman after they have birth. I don't understand that, but that's another conversation. Um, and I wanted to, to give her extended time. And, and we were like down to the wire when she was about to give birth. So when I was taking this test for course careers, the room was spinning. I was sweating. It was like I'm standing, sitting here, standing still. But my, my eyes are like moving like this. I was like hyperventilating. And, 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 and I had to kind of try to calm myself down. Uh, but that's a level of anxiety that you can experience when you put a lot of pressure on yourself to get something done. So I don't know if that uh, might be a different experience for you that are watching, but you may be dealing with anxiety. And I want you to let you know that you can overcome that, especially when you're stepping into a new space. Uh, the last thing I'll say is that Myron Golden, and I quote him a lot on the show, Dr. Myron Golden, but he talks about fear. Fear is like a, a basically an apprehension in a present danger. That's a present danger. If you see a, a lion get out of the cage of the zoo and cross your path, that's a present danger. You might want to run, um, but it, or or whatever you need to do in a situation like that. But when it comes to anxiety um, or, you know, anxiety specifically, you don't necessarily have a present danger. It's you're, you're having a fear or trepidation about something that has not happened yet. And so you're thinking, man, I'm going to fail this test. I shouldn't do course careers, man. I can't, I'm not good at studying material. I can't do course careers. 
that's not a that's a figment of your imagination. You have to get in there. You have to do the work. You have to put you have to apply yourself and you'll be surprised at the results. And with that being said, I want to kind of take it back and talk about you, Della. Tell us about because you mentioned it, depression and anxiety. How did you deal with that and how did you overcome depression? Yeah, that's a great I say that's a great segue. Um, so you mentioned fear real quick. One of the ways I got through it was really pouring into myself and pouring into my spirit. I realized a lot of people that I was around would just bring negativity. I was watching negativity. It just was so much negative around me and I had to clear out my space. So I started watching speakers like Les Brown and one of his things on when he talks about fear is fear is false evidence appearing real. Love it. But the more you pour into your spirit and the more you put good and positivity in, the more it's going to come out. Like you can't squeeze an orange juice. I mean, you can't squeeze, squeeze an orange and get apple juice. Whatever you put in is what's going to come out. You squeeze an apple, you're going to get apple juice. So whatever you're putting into your body, whenever you're faced against this, you know, struggle and these adversities, whatever you've been pouring in is, is going to come out. So I would say definitely reading. I had to start reading positive books, reading ways to get around, not around, but get through anxiety, depression, um, and really just go look in the mirror. And I had to go back to affirmations. I, I am a very firm believer on affirmations. I would listen to speakers like Lisa Nichols, who is a Black woman, phenomenal speaker, world-renowned speaker. And she talks about depression and anxiety and just going in the mirror and telling yourself, hey, you know what? I'm beautiful. I'm smart. I'm intelligent and giving yourself those affirmations because you're looking, you're, it's so easy to look at someone else and tell them all the beauty and the power, the love and, and everything that you see in them. But how often do you go look at yourself and pour into yourself, mm. especially for the parents? I'm always pouring into my daughters. I'm always pouring into my son, but how often I had to ask myself, how often do I stop and go pour into myself? That's why you're burnt out. You can't pour from an empty cup. So that's what I noticed for me. That's what it came from. It came from me putting, and it, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you shouldn't put your family first, but don't forget that you're still a person and don't forget that you still matter and you still have dreams and you still have goals and you still have aspirations and you can do those. And anytime you put everything that you want and need that will benefit your family, I'm not saying be selfish, but something that can benefit your family and can grow and that's really going to empower you and, and, you know, make you feel good. You put all of that to the side, you're bound to feel depressed. You're bound to feel bogged down. You're bound to feel stuck. And it's not, it's not meant for that. We're meant to grow. We're meant to expand. That's just what life does. It continues to grow and expand, grow your mind and expand your mind, read, listen to positivity and do as much as you can to get yourself closer to where you want to be in life. That is well said. That is so well said. One thing my manager said to me recently is, you know, I because uh, I'm very driven, especially because I have motivation. I got um, we have a big family, so I'm motivated <laughs> to make sure I don't drop the ball, especially being quote unquote breadwinner, right? And so one of the things that my manager said to me, and it's just a simple phrase, but she but she said it because she could tell that I was like, oh man, I'm. I, I want to do like, suppose we get like five. I'm, I'm, I'm basically exceeding expectations, but in my mind, my imposter syndrome is saying I'm not doing good enough, right? And so she just said, hey, be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. And I'm saying that to you today. Those that are watching, be kind to yourself. You may not necessarily be where you want to be right now, but you will be there eventually if you put in the work, the time, the effort, but be kind to yourself. Take the yes, moment to loosen. Say it again. Say that again. That's good. Say it again. Stick with it. Stick with it. Don't give up. It's going to feel like that. Everything feels like that in the beginning. When you first got on a bike without training wheels, you're like, what the heck am I doing? And you're wobbling, you're falling, you're hurting yourself. It sucks. It doesn't feel good, but you stick with it. And now you can never forget how to ride a bike. I don't care how old you are. You will never forget how to ride a bike. It's the same. Ex I'm going to tell you. When I first got onto my first demonstration, oh my gosh, you ever seen the meme with the kids like, when you, when you, when you, when you, and he stuttered, <laughs> that was me. <laughs> You're like, is he going to get to the point? Is he going to get to the point? <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep trying. And I may not be the best when I start, but doggone it, I'm going to keep trying until I get there, you know, and that's just the spirit I have. 
and that's a spirit that we all should have really <laughs> the spirit of Della. like we need to like be like okay no matter what we're gonna get through it and and, and speaking about your first demo you have a incredible story and i, I just i just want to make sure we make this clear that everybody knows that she is an anomaly but it's a beautiful thing because she went through course careers and instead of becoming an sdr or bdr she went to be an account manager and the way we kind of we were talking about it earlier in my job and i think in other places might be considered an inside sales role right where you kind of handle but you're doing even more than that you're doing not just the front end you're doing the back end can you explain the role and how you even landed that role in your job yeah. So the role that I have now, um, they call them headhunters, right? So you're going out and you're looking for these prospects. So you're doing the SDR BDR role in the beginning of the sales cycle, you're bringing them in and you're generating interest. Um, and then once the interest is generated, you're also going to demonstrate the product. Uh, some companies do discovery calls. We try to, you know, see what fits the needs of that individual customer. Um, but typically you're doing, you know, the discovery because discovery never ends. You're always doing discovery. Then you're doing the demonstration, you're doing negotiation and you're handling the closing. Um, we get some warm leads and some, you know, hot leads, but most of our uh, revenue is generated by our own prospecting. So it's a full sales cycle role. And then I also get some referrals from um like the customer success side, they'll send over referrals. So we're doing pretty much everything. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So if anybody wonders if, if being an SDR or being a BDR, or in this case, being a, a the role, it's called account manager, right? I just want to be clear. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Um, so at my company, it's called a regional account manager. Yes. Wow. So it's, it's, she's putting in work, but, uh, and we don't have to dive in too deep in regards to details about it, but you, would you say that the work is well worth it? It's definitely worth it. And I want to make sure I answer your question. I got that job from doing exactly that. And I know everybody has an opinion about getting into tech and how to get the jobs, but I just looked at it like this. I had three tiers. Tier one is companies that I absolutely want to work for. I will walk around with their t-shirt on just because <laughs> those were my tier one company. And I only had two in that tier one category. Tier two are like nice to haves. Man, these would be great. I would be happy with one of these as long as I can like get in it. I'm still content with this. It's still in my vertical. I want it. Tier one was, hey, you know what? Got my foot in the door. <laughs> like an offer in my hand is better than two hypothetical offers. So you know what? That's what I do. And the way I did that was my tier one companies, I'm gunning, going so hard on LinkedIn. I'm adding people. I'm reaching out to people. I'm connecting with as many people as possible. I'm checking LinkedIn. I got rid of all social media aside from LinkedIn. And I was checking LinkedIn multiple times a day. Anytime I see one of those two companies mentioned, I'm commenting. Most people don't comment under LinkedIn. They just don't. Most people react. So I'm commenting that way. Whenever I did get to the point of applying, my name would resonate with someone. That was my intention. So I'm just just full intention. And anybody that knows me, I'm all about intention. That is like, I believe in intentions. So I was commenting under everything I could. I was putting myself out there. And I would say like a week later, I got hit up by the internship manager. Hey, how's it going? How's the course? You know, I responded back. He never responded back to me. So I'm like, okay, just keep going. I'm just fine of responding, like just putting myself out there, getting in front of people. My tier two companies, I would follow them on LinkedIn, but I wouldn't really do a lot of outreach. I wouldn't add many people, if maybe just like one or two, a few, not many. And then the tier one companies, it was like, almost like interview practice. <laughs> um, but halfway through the course, the hiring manager, who's now my VP, uh, reached out to me and asked me how I was doing when I was expected to finish. And I'm doggone it. I was putting two hours in from there. I was putting four hours. In. <laughs> I was like, hold on, give me like a week. Let me just finish. So I just hurried up and finished mine. I'm still juggling the five classes, the, the three kids at home, like husband still juggling all of that. Um, but I was like, I got to get through this. And I started doing my interviews and I mean, the rest is kind of history. Wow. You're in, wait, yeah, I, I got to bring that back for the people. You're in college. You're also in course careers. You, you're a mother. You're a, you're a wife. 
<laughs> you're doing all these different things kind of feels like me a little bit but uh, um, you i think with with college that that adds a layer that i didn't have to deal with at this particular time but that that shows you the tenacity that you that you have to have when you have that why behind it like when you you have a you have a strong why you have your family you have your career you want things to change and so i could see why you pushed the way you did but but Y'all, hear the nuggets, man. Hear the nuggets. I'm going to say it again. Tier one, tier two, tier three. If you don't have a plan of how to approach companies that you're looking to, to, to get in the door with, do what, do what Della did. Tier one, tier two, tier three. Break it down so that way you kind of have your focus and your gaze set upon your goal. Man, this is good. This is really, really good. I felt like while well, she was talking, I'm like, this is gold nuggets. Do you have any other golden tips for, for anybody else before we pivot into the mindset? Because I think this is, I think you got some more to give. <laughs> yeah, um, golden nuggets in regards to the job search. Yeah, right. The job search interviewing, how to navigate LinkedIn in regards to relationships and building relationships and rapport. Yeah, I mean, honestly, so I kid you guys not, I had like 10 to 15 LinkedIn connections when I first joined Course Careers. I, I'm telling you, I was in the military. You don't use LinkedIn. In the, anyone in the military would tell you, you really don't get on LinkedIn much. I mean, I didn't. I couldn't remember the last time I was on there. I think I had one picture. I don't think I posted at all. I maybe had like four or five connections. I was not big on it. When I joined Course Careers, it was like 10 to 15 by that time. But it wasn't something I felt was important until I took course careers. Everything I learned, I learned in course careers and I just implemented. That was the thing that set me aside. It wasn't that I just was this old oh, uber smart person. It was just whenever I heard at the time it was Troy teaching it. Whenever I heard Troy say you need to do this, 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 and this, I'm like, bet, let's go. And I'm doing it. And I'm doing it. And I'm doing it. And I'm doing it. And then there's another list of to-dos. Okay, I'm doing that too. I'm doing that too. Um and a big part of my why is I went through years of depression, you know, and like really bad depression. I lost um, the most important person to me prior to like starting my own family. I was raised by my great grandmother from infancy and she passed while I was pregnant with my second daughter. And I went through years of just depression and just really not being able to get out of bed and not even recognizing myself. And I got to a point where I was like, enough is enough. Like Della, where are you at? Like, where's Della? You know, put out an APB for Della. This is not the Della I know. And I had to get to a point where I could turn that ship around. And I said, this, I'm going to make this work. You know what I'm saying? And like, it was, it was my family and it was, you know, the love that I have for them. But a lot of it was a love that I have for myself as well, because I, I couldn't keep letting myself down. I had to honor everything that my grandmother taught me, who she taught me to be and raised me to be. And I, I owed it to myself. I'm going to be honest. I love my family. Don't get me wrong, but I really owed it to myself to make it happen. And I understand where you're coming from, especially for, for mothers who give so much to everybody around them that they neglect themselves. And so for the mother that's listening to this, do it for yourself. Like Della said, do it for yourself or the father who's listening to this, do this for yourself as well do this for yourself as well. Um, as you're talking, I was thinking about uh, an interview I just had uh, released recently with Nikki, Nikki Carney. If you got a chance, check that interview out where she did lose her mother, who was a significant pillar, not only in her life, but in the community. I mean, the, the funeral hall was packed out. And, but I think what, what, what resonated about th- that story as well is that when you are doing it with the, in, in the loving memory and the legacy of somebody that you d- deeply cherish, Man, there's nothing that could stop you. There's nothing that could stop you. Now, right. I think people, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, what, I had a question as you were talking, and I think people might want to hear this or know more. What does a day in the life look like for you now as you're in your role? Yeah, um, that's a great question. So I still have my three tiers, right? Um, who knew, right? You do the job and then you can get the job, right? You show them that you can do it. I have my focus accounts that I'm, you know, checking on LinkedIn. I'm commenting the same exact thing I was doing prior to. Um, I have my, you know, tier two accounts. I'm still following cadence and my tier one accounts where I'm following cadence. And if things aren't working out after so long, then, hey, you know what? It's time to cut ties. You got to know when to (laughs) let certain things go too. Um, 
but the day to day is I come in, I usually just check emails. I like to start my day with some practice and some drilling. So I'll go through our console, I'll, you know, try and describe some things in different ways and just see what my day is lined up, what I have lined up for the day. So how many, you know, demos I have, you know, see where I can fit some call blocks. Um, Cause I like to do my prospecting in call blocks. So I'll start out practicing, checking out the day, answering any emails. From there, I like to give myself a little break, walk my dog, you know, um, <clears throat> check out any emails that I have from current opportunities, anything that's important, anything pending, something that needs attention, I give eyes to it. Uh, we have our team meetings, our, our like morning meeting with the company, our morning meeting with our team, and then we can break off. Um, I typically like to include some drilling whether that be in the morning or the afternoon, it just depends on how the day is stacked up. But it's really, I have the autonomy to move my day around. I try to do the same thing just about every day, but I give myself a little bit of, um, I like to mix it up just a little bit, you know, so it doesn't get stale. You know, um, I do my prospecting in the morning and then I like to take a lot of my demo negotiation calls in the afternoon. But it's pretty, pretty relaxed. I don't have a manager down my back. You need to do this, you need to do that. They just kind of check in periodically to see if I need anything, if there's anything I'm, you know, need assistance with, like whether it's crafting this email or how should I manage this account, which direction should I take this, giving me strategies. Um, it's pretty, I don't know, it's pretty relaxed. Coming from being in the military, it's very relaxed. I love it. Absolutely love it. I was I'm laughing to myself. I'm thinking like you went from military because I have a brother and sister that that served in the Air Force and the Army. Uh, and <laughs> you went from military to to an environment that's like, hey, just do your quota and I'll see you later. <laughs> you know, but show up to meetings and I'll see you later. <laughs> you know, it's, I, it's so funny because I tell people that all the time. I'm like, there's a level of autonomy that you have. It almost feels like there's a level of respect that you're given and just empowerment that they're like, you know, you could do it we trust you. We trust you. And so, and so just do your job and, and we'll go. And, if, and I, to me as a, as a, especially as a man, a black man in this space, I'm like, that love, that love, that, that's, that's a big thing to me. That's huge. I, I went to go shopping cause we needed something and I came back and there were no cops at the house. I was like, this is cool. <laughs> this is, this is, this is what I'm talking about. So no, that's, that, that, that's, that's, thank you so much for sharing about that. Cause people need to know about the flexibility of working in this space. It really, it's not, it's not, nothing can compare in my opinion, but actually there are some things that'll be great, but that's another story. Uh, but anyway, I want to pivot now to the mindset. The mindset that Della has, and we kind of talked about it here and there, but how would you sum up the brain, the mindset that someone needs to have to be you, to get where you are, and to even scale from there? I would say, for starters, you got to surround yourself with good people, because I have my days. I have my days where I don't feel like doing it. I have my days where I get in a funk and I'm negative and my husband's like, uh-uh, <laughs> come on. You got to turn that ship around. We got to get, we got to get going. Like, don't let this go to waste. We start our morning with, I know it may sound corny, but it's like a motivational video that we just love. And it's got all of the greats, Les Brown, Tony Robbins, uh, um, Eric Thomas. It's got a lot of greats in it. And I would say the first step is surround yourself with other great positive mind because you're going to face adversity. Something's going to happen that's not going the way you think it should go. And when that happens, it's the way that you react that's going to dictate what happens in your future. So step one is surrounding yourself with positive people, or if you can't have people around you, YouTube is a fun resource. Surround yourself that way. You can be in rooms with, you know, hearing Michelle Obama speak, hearing Barack Obama, hearing anyone speak that is phenomenal and put yourself in in that room, so to speak. Um, from there, it's just implement what you learn, find out what works, experiment, try things that work. And if it works for you, keep doing it. If it doesn't, you know, find something else that works. You got to stick with it for a little while to really be able to tell if it's working, but do that. And by that, I mean, you know, journaling. People would always tell me to journal and I never, <laughs> I would never journal. I'm like, oh, I don't know, but I started and I started sticking to it and man, made phenomenal changes. Uh, the next thing is read, read as much as you can, as frequently as you can, like that will transform your life. Just reading anything, but I like to read positive. I like to read books about the mind and, and positive thinking. I'm just really big on 
positivity, if you can't tell. <laughs> um, I would also say read books like Grit by Angela Duckworth. There's another book called Mindset by Carol Dweck. Very good books. Um, find ways to spot your blind spots. We all have blind spots, right? And you think that you're doing really well, but there's areas that you can grow in. You might be really smart, but emotionally unintelligent, where you're just always popping off. You got attitude all the time. You know, find out ways to find those blind spots and round yourself out. And then the last thing I would say is get a coach, get a good coach or a mentor, whether you have to pay for it or you find someone that's doing what you want to do for free. Find a coach and Ask them to help you identify your specific blind spots and your areas of growth. And I think that you should have more than one coach. But these are the ways I think that I really started to grow and progress in my life. Those were gems, y'all. What she just said were some gems. I was I, I, when you guys said the part about reading, I'm like, OK, cool. She got three and she's and but she kept going. I'm like, this is so good what she has said. So right now, y'all need to pause. Go back. Listen to that again, pause, go back and listen to it a third time because the books she mentioned in there, the things that she's talking about, your crowd, what who's, who you surround yourself with is so important. And you could get a new crowd <laughs> in course careers or you get a new crowd uh, by watching what you watch on YouTube, you know, and, and it, it, she's absolutely right because honestly, for me to break into this space, it was, I had to change my mentality and actually introduce new things that I started to watch on a regular basis. And it was in the form of podcasts, was in the form of YouTube videos that helped me make that transformation apart from books that I was reading as well. So she, Della is absolutely in the money, y'all. Definitely follow her, subscribe to her YouTube channel. Uh, and with her permission, I can put your LinkedIn profile below, right? They can reach out to you on LinkedIn. Is absolutely. that okay? I welcome reaching out to me on LinkedIn. I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching if needed, whether it's just career strategy or you just want to chat about some things that you're going through. I do that as well. Um, reach out to me. I'm here as a resource for you guys. I'm a strong believer that, you know, we go, go through what we go through in life to help bring other people through it. It's not about me. It's about you guys. So I'm here for you, whatever you need from me. Don't ever hesitate to reach out to me. If I don't get back to you right away, I will circle back. <laughs> I promise. Y'all, she's married and she got kids, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Give her some grace. Be kind. Like I said, be kind to yourself. Be kind to, be kind to Della. <laughs> Man alive. This was great. This was great. Thank you so much, Della, for gracing us with your presence here on Tech Niche Tips. I'm really happy that we had this conversation and I'm going to put your LinkedIn below, YouTube channel below, and y'all just follow Della and see what she's doing on her channel, see what she's doing on LinkedIn and be inspired like I was. Honestly, be inspired to get into this space and change the course of your life. Well, like always, I want to say thank you. And until next time, I hope to see you on the other side. Take care, family. We can run this way.